Hi everyone, in this video we will be discussing about tri data structure. So tri is a tree data structure which is used to efficiently store and retrieve keys in a data set of strings. So the word tri is derived from retrieve. So tri is used to efficiently store and get keys in a data set of strings. It is also known as prefix tree as all the descendants of a node have a common prefix. Now let's see how a try looks like. So we have a try here in which we have stored five strings. First string is T H E I R. So it is there. Second is T H E R E. Third is answer fourth is any and fifth is by so these five strings are stored in this try data structure so we can see here that for some of the strings we have a common prefix so like the first two strings there and there the common prefix is the so this is the common prefix so we can see in the try that this common prefix is stored only once. So these three alphabets are common. So it is stored only once for both of these strings. Similarly, for the other two strings, answer and any, the common prefix is an. So an is stored only once. So if in place of try, we would have used any conventional data structure like an array or a map, then in that case, we would have stored all these strings separately. So one string would be there other string would be T-H-E-R-E. -E. So that is not very efficient storage because some portion of the string is common here. So we have the common prefix. So try makes use of this information and stores the common prefix only once. So that is why it is called it stores the strings efficiently and also retrieves them efficiently. So this is the concept of try data structure. Now let's look at the data structure which can be used to store a try node. So we have this structure try node, which is used to represent each node of the try. So each node of the try will have 26 child nodes. So why 26? Because, because in English words, we have 26 alphabets from A to Z. So for here, we are taking that each node will have 26 child. So if this is the node, it will have 26 child. So, so far we have studied binary trees in which each node had two child. But in case of try, if we are representing the English alphabets, so we need each node to have 26 child. So the alphabet size of the English language is 26. So that is why we have 26 child here. Then we keep a Boolean variable is word. So basically this indicates that whether a word is terminating here. So the try that we have seen here. So the words here are by any answer. So basically all these are words which are stored in the try. So there should be some indication that when we are traversing, we know that a word is finished here. So to indicate that we have this Boolean variable. So basically all the leaf nodes will have this boolean variable as true because the word is ending there. Also, there could be another case. Let's say we have a word anytime. So anytime will be represented as a and y is common. So we'll have t, then we'll have i, then m, and then e. So in that case, this is word will be true for the leaf node, which is e and for y also because the word any is ending here. So this is what indicates that a word is finishing at that node or not. So for each node of the try, we'll have 26 child nodes and a Boolean variable to indicate whether a word ends there or not. Then for our convenience, we can also have a constructor here, which basically initializes all the child nodes to null and the is word to false. So whenever we create a new try node, we can initialize it 
by setting all the child nodes to null and by setting the is word to false. Now let's have a look how we can insert a word in try. Let's say we have this root node. So in this insert function, we are passing the root node and let's say the word we are inserting is there. So we traverse all the alphabets of this word and for each alphabet, we check whether the node child is equal to null. So currently the C alphabet is equal to T. So C minus A basically gives us the index of the alphabet T. So index of T is 20, index of A is 1. So basically we are checking the 19th index. So if that is null, we will create a new try node at the 19th index. So basically for root, we will create a new child node and we will set T there because it is the 19th location and we will create a new try node there. So now this T node also has 26 child nodes and and the boolean variable is word and then we move node to this child node that we have created so node comes here so in the next iteration now c points to the next character of the word so it is h so now we'll do h minus a so basically we'll find the index and then we'll insert h and then node will come here so going like this we'll insert all the words so we'll insert e then we'll insert R and then we'll insert E. So that is how we insert a word in the try. Now let's say we insert another word which is T-H-E-I-R. So both of these words have the common prefix of T-H-E. So when we come across the first alphabet which is T, we check if the node has a child T which is equal to null. But the root node already has a child T so it is not equal to null. So node will come here. So at this point, we are not creating a new node. We are using the existing node. Then we come to the next alphabet, which is H. Now we check if this node has a child H. So H is already there. So this statement is false. So we come to the next statement and node moves here. We come to the next alphabet, which is E. We check if E is present as the child of H, it is present. So node comes here and then we move to the node E. Then we check the next word which is I. We check if I is the child of E. So I is not the child of E. So now we'll create a new node I. And in the next step, node will move to this newly created node. Now the last alphabet is R. We check if I has a child R. There is no child R. So we create a new child node R and we move node to this pointer. So here we can see that the both nodes have the common prefix of T-H-E and then they both split up into different words T-H-E-R-E and T-H-E-I-R. And once we insert the word, we set the is word equal to true. So in both the cases, when we inserted both the words, this E and R will have the is word variable set to true. So this will indicate that a word is ending here. So that is how we insert a word in the try data structure. Now, once we've created a try, let's see how we can print it. So here we'll see how we can print the contents of a try. So we have this print function in which we initially pass the root node and the prefix is empty string. So for all these nodes, the leaf node will have the is word equal to true. We check if the node has is word equal to true. So this is not the case. Then we traverse all the 26 child of the root node. We check whichever child is not equal to null. So for easier understanding, let's write down the indices for all these child nodes. So this is A is 0, B is 1, E is 4. So now we have written down indices for all the nodes. So when we traverse from i equal to 0 to 26, we first check if the 0 child is not equal to null. So for root, we have the 0 child which is equal to a. So what we do is we call the print function with the node child i and we add prefix plus a plus i. 
so prefix was empty so this is basically to create the string so prefix was empty then we add the ith index to the alphabet a so basically here we are adding a to the prefix so the prefix becomes a and node is at root a let's say it is node a so this is node a then we check if is word is equal to true so basically from root we come to a and prefix is currently a. then we check child of a so we have child of a is n so we call the prefix function again for n so basically we are going down so now the prefix becomes a n for n we check the child nodes which are s and y so for n we come to s and we add prefix as s then for s we come to w because for each node we are traversing all the 26 child and whenever we have a node which has a child which is not equal to null we call this print function recursively so when we are at r the prefix is answer and the node is r we check if node is node is word equal to true so this is true so we print the word so one of the strings that we have printed is answer so now we'll traverse back to all the childs because this for loop is there so f so we have traversed all the childs for f we go back we have traversed all the child of e we go back to w then we go back to s then we go back to n now we traverse the remaining child of n which is y and at this point the prefix was any when the prefix is any we check if node is word equal to true so that will be true so we print any here so going like this we'll traverse back to n we traverse back to a then we check the remaining child of root so next child we have is index 1 which is b so now we'll traverse the remaining child of b which is b y e so by will be printed now we'll traverse back to root because the recursion is going on and then we'll traverse to the next child 19th index which is t and then we'll go to h because it is the only child of t then we'll go to e then at e we have two childs i and r we'll traverse the first index which is 8 so we'll traverse i and then we'll traverse r so there will be printed then we'll go back we reach e and then we'll print the remaining nodes r and e so there will be printed so that is how using recursion we can print the contents of try for each node we have to check all the 26 nodes if there is a non-null child we call the print function again for that child and we add the prefix and for any node if the is word property is true that means a word is ending there so we should print the prefix now let's see what are the applications of try so one of the most common applications of try is autocomplete so autocomplete feature is widely used you can see uh, in the google search in browser in any ide which we use for editing code etc so basically let's say you go to google search you type what is national anthem of india let's say you write what is nation so whenever you write this words google gives you some suggestions so those suggestions how it incorporates is it finds the what is the prefix for the string that you have typed so let's say the user has typed the so if these words are stored in try then we know that we have two words which have the prefix the so in the autocomplete option we can suggest these two words similarly when we use any ide like vs code or ellipse whenever we're typing a code and we press alt plus space we get some suggestions so those suggestions can be retrieved from try based on the strings that user have typed so we just need to find what is the common prefix and based on that we can find the strings that have those prefix so autocomplete has a lot of applications and uh, try is used to implement that second application of try is spell checker let's say a spelling is given and we need to check whether that spelling is correct or not so if we have a try of all the english words then whenever user has typed something we can simply check that whether that words exist in the try or not because that complete word should be in the tree so the common prefix should be there 
So if there is no such word in the try, then we can say that the spelling is incorrect and we can give him suggestions also based on the try that we have. Then is the longest prefix matching. This is also based on the try because in try we are storing the common prefixes. So the longest common prefix of two strings can be obtained by looking at the try. So these are some of the important applications of try which are widely used in computer science. There are many more applications but I have just listed down the top three applications of try. Now once you have understood how to create a try and how to print the contents of a try, let's see how we can implement it. Let's say we have these five words and we want to insert them in the try and then print the contents of try. So these are our five words. So I have kept a vector in which I have stored all these words and I have created the root node of the try. Then I am traversing all these words and inserting them in the try. So I have called this insert function. I pass it the root node and the word. In this insert function, I traverse all the alphabets of the word. I check whether the child node at that index is equal to null. If it is null, I create a new try node and then I move to the newly created node. And once I've traversed all the alphabets of the word, I mark the is word boolean to true because the word is ending here. So this insert function is called for all the words that we want to insert in the try. And then I print the contents of a try using this print function. So I call this print function, I pass it the root node and a prefix which is initially null. In this print function, I check if the node passed has the is word property to true. If it is true, then I print it. Otherwise, I traverse the alphabet size. So currently it is 26. I check whichever node is not equal to null. I add that to the prefix and I call the print function recursively for that child. So using this print function, all the string which is stored in the try will be printed. Let's see the output of this program. So the output is answer any by there and there. So all the strings which are stored in the try are printed. So all the source code that I've shown is available in my GitHub repository, link of which is present here and as well as in the description. So that was all for this video. If you have any doubts or suggestions, please leave in the comment section below. If you like my content, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me to make more such content. And until next time, this is Sandeep Thapar signing off.